My name is Lenny Blue. I am a community engagement specialist with CWS. I'm home based out of Kansas City, Missouri. However, um, right now I'm currently in Southern California uh, broadcasting with you today. So thank you for joining us for the final installment of our spring 2023 crop chat series. Uh, today's webinar is team captains equal a successful walk. Um, the success of a walk depends on, on a strong leadership and team captains are the basis for this leadership. So today we'll hear from three, actually four top team captains as they share their ideas um, for fundraising, for communication and other ways that they maintain a strong walk team. So um, we'll let each of our guests speak and then we'll follow up with some Q&A afterwards, like um, Heather said. So go ahead and put those questions in the chat whenever you think about it or in the questions box. That way you don't forget it. Um, so our first presenter today is Jim Fairchild. Jim joins us from the Greater Triangle Area Crop Hunger Walk in R Riley, North Carolina. He and his wife Cheryl have coordinated their team from St. Paul's Christian Church for a large portion of the team's 40 year history with the walk. So I will meet myself and Jim, welcome. Hi, hi everybody. The Crop Walk is an annual event, of course, and that makes a big difference. It's on the schedule at our church, that's our organization, and it's assumed by our members and friends that we will participate. Let me say that it's important to start planning early. The Greater Triangle uh, Crop Hunger Walk is the last Sunday in October, and we no doubt frustrate our coordinator, Wayne Hager, who constantly reminds us to get started. But we do appreciate the reminders and all the tips and instructions uh, for the coming event. Uh, we try to have our team page and some of the personal pages ready to go in August. We use the really helpful uh, crop email system to contact our relatives, our relatives and friends, mostly out of town every year. They expect to hear from us. And they almost always support us, even though there are probably crop walks in their parts of the country uh, that they could support. This is the one time of the year that we ask them for donations. And uh, they understand that we and our team and our church really care about poverty and hunger. And they know we appreciate their help in doing something about it. We also remind them about the ongoing work of our partner Church World Service here and around the world. By early September, we've recruited as many team members as we can. There's never enough, that's for sure. We've helped them to register and make an initial, initial uh, donation. And we encourage them to start contacting all their friends and relatives and coworkers using whatever method they want to use, but encouraging the online donations. It's really good if one or more of the team members just decides that he or she is going to go all out and rally support. When that happens, it's encouraging for everyone else. And we start to see the numbers really rise. At the same time, we start using every form of written communication we have at our church, emails, newsletters, church bulletins, everything, to be sure that everyone knows the walk is coming. Then in October, when the main outreach emphasis for the church is crop, we add announcements during the worship services, even some personal uh, testimonies for people who've been involved or for other reasons, or short comments from benefiting nonprofit groups, and we make it clear how to help. 
Our ministers, of course, talk about it in their sermons too. Also, we have a visible crop bulletin board uh, with updates on our progress, as well as all kinds of information. And probably more important, we have a crop information table for three or four Sundays right outside where we sign up walkers and accept donations as people are leaving church. Now, now they know it's time to show their support and they always do. Then our 20 to 30 walkers, we never know how many until the last minute it seems like, uh, head for Pullen Park or wherever the walk's going to be that year and uh, join the fun and the walk with a whole lot of other teams. A job well done by so many faithful people. Thank you, Jim, for sharing with us today. Um, you know, I really like uh, how you mentioned that you have multiple touch points, um, both online through email, encouraging people to register online, but also having those um, those visible in-person um, touch points for people to see you in church and have multiple people throughout the church talking about it, and not just yourself uh, delegating. That's a very, very good key. So thank you so much for sharing with us. And uh, we'll have you on for uh, questions after we go through the next speakers. Thank you so very much. Good. Thank you. Um, so our next guests, uh, Lisa and Marcia couldn't be with us today, but they were kind enough to send us a recording. Um, they're team captains for the Vienna Crop Hunger Walk in Vienna, Virginia. Lisa is also the event coordinator for the walk, and both have volunteered with the Vienna Crop Walk for over five years. Today, they're going to share innovative ways to communicate with team members and other tips that they use. So I'm going to mute myself and Heather, if you will start that recording for us. You can come watch this if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. All righty. So my name is Belinda and I work with the Vienna Crop Hunger Walk. And with me today, I have two team captains who will be, um, Kind of going through and answering questions on what makes a great team captain. So Lisa and Marsha, you both were chosen because of good communication with team members in your churches, being great motivators and even being innovative. So can you give examples of how you guys are innovative or communicate with your teams and the best ways to do that? Sure. Um, I'll start with the easy question, which is communication. Um, you would ask for an example, and I think that um, it kind of depends on each team and how, you know, everybody knows their own people and how they like to communicate. But um, one thing for our organization is that during the pandemic, we all went virtual and started a weekly newsletter. And so that weekly newsletter has been a really good way of getting out the word that the crop walk is coming up, getting out the details about how to sign up and donate, um, and even getting out details about how we did after the walk. So I would say that a lot of the communications go through email, um, as well as supplemented by in-person communication, flyers, um, word of mouth, um, and um, our organization is a church. And so having church leaders also communicate has been a really big way of mobilizing our team. Uh, Marcia, did you want to add on communication? Well, I think a large part of what made it successful for our particular team was Lisa's method of communication because she was very thorough, very detailed, and she was organized and, and she had an agenda for each of our planning meetings and we knew what to expect. And I think people appreciated that. Um, you know, it wasn't willy nilly. Um, and uh, disorganized. And um, I know I, as a teammate, um, appreciated that. And, yeah, I actually commend you guys for that because I'm sure during the pandemic, a lot of people were like, ah, we don't know how to do this and we're not going to assimilate or adapt to what's needed. So um, more power in the newsletters. That's really good. I'm really yeah. cool. Well, I think yeah. with the pandemic, you know, the communication was even more um, um 
more um, useful and, mm -hmm. and more important. We needed that extra communication. Let me... so, and Lisa adhered to that. So it mm -hmm. was very much appreciated. And not just the planning team, but I think it carried over to um, the whole team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's very important. Especially like you were saying, the communication aspect. Um, yeah. Do you guys have anything else to add? Innovation, like different ways that you guys get people motivated for the walk, things like yeah. that. I had two innovation ideas and I'm going to save motivation for Marcia, who is the best at motivation. It really is. <laughs> um, but for innovation, um, one thing that's really helped me being a team captain is that I feel like I'm really good at what Marcia said, the sort of like being organized and like sending out emails and writing flyers, but I don't feel like I know people as well as some of the other people on the team. Mm -hmm. And so one thing we did is had co-captains and kind of split responsibilities so I really leaned heavily on people like Marsha and another co-captain who knew everyone in the church. And I knew some people, but they knew everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd ask like, oh, how can I get this out to them? And so I'd be in charge of like writing up stuff and they might be in charge of distributing things or talking to people. Um, and so that really helped um, kind of alleviate some of my fears. So I'd say like dividing responsibilities um, when your captain is okay. Yeah. Um, delegating to people who know everybody is okay. Um, and then also for innovation, um, one thing we've learned is that um, whoever sort of like runs the crop walk in like a logistical way, um, those teams tend to be more involved in walking and in donating. And one thing our group does is we have our youth group um, mark the route, um, mm -hmm. the day of the walk using chalk and signs. Yeah. And I think that like knowing that our youth group is a really big part of the walk gets other members really involved gets their parents involved makes it like a thing we own and mm -hmm. so i think that kind of motivates and mobilizes the team so if you're trying to be innovative and also energize people maybe trying to think of like where your team can also volunteer to help run the walk in addition to just walking yeah and then i want to throw it to Mar marcia for motivation because she's really good at that oh <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also because I've been a member of the church for a yep. very long time. Like um it's it'll be going on 50 years. So I I do have pretty much a handle on on uh, the people in the church and who would want to be involved in this. And I think Lisa brought up a good point uh, with the youth group. I think that is so significant is to getting the youth in, engaged in, and involved. And not just the youth, but their leadership. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we have a fairly new minister of faith formation and outreach, and this was new to him uh, to be involved in this. And he caught on quick and um, and he was there to be the, the minister to do the opening prayer along with um, another pastor from another church. Um, so having him involved was very important. And I think another uh, important factor is your minister, your senior minister, and to get that senior minister involved and excited. And because she had a good relationship and was very present for Lisa's mom when her mom was going through a very tough journey to make her transition in life. Um, um, Kristen, Reverend Kristen, had a deep appreciation for the legacy that Lisa's mom was leaving. And I think that had a lot to do really with the motivation um, of the team is because they wanted to live up to what Lisa's mom, Barbara had started and was very much a part of. If it hadn't been for, for Barbara, um, the crop walk wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um, so she was really an innovator and she left a, um, important legacy behind. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, Lisa is moving forward with it. Yes, she is. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. Well, no, that's really good. Um, definitely that aspect of having the youth involved, I think is really important. Um, and from being at the walk of this past fall, like they did a great job as well. And so it kind of is just like, everybody getting involved, not just the people on the committee who are planning it, yeah. but the whole church. And then adding to Marsha's point about having the senior minister involved as well. Mm -hmm. If you get the senior minister involved and they have a passion for it as well, the church or the congregation will follow as well. So yeah. I think those are really good points. Um, and really good um, aspects of being team captains, because obviously 
all of that just makes y'all's job easier as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for being willing to be interviewed. I really do appreciate it. Sure thing. Can I, I I'm I'm going to add the uh, admission that I made to um, Belinda <laughs> earlier with yeah. that. To be honest, in all these years of being uh, involved in the crop walk, I have never been a team captain. Mm -hmm. I've always been not even a co-captain, which I think is really uh, important. I always look to Barbara for carrying the torch mm -hmm. and um, and helping her to get other people involved. And that's what I've done with uh, Lisa, too. I've been more of a mentor, um, somebody that's excited um, about the reasons for the walk. Um, and I think another important factor was because we were contributing to a local organization. Yes. I mean, 25% of the proceeds went to a local nonprofit organization that we in our church and many other faith communities um, in Vienna um, contribute to, and that's the community of helping others. And I think that was a big motivator, too. Um, it's because we wanted to support them. So it wasn't just the global mission yes. um, through CWS. It was through um, helping a local um, organization as well. Yeah, and that's very important as well. Um, you know, you help everybody. You have one day to help the whole globe, but then it also helps people within your local community that are also struggling with the things that we're helping people with globally. So I think that's one of the most beautiful things about the crop walk. It's not just overseas people that will never meet. It's people within my own community that need my help too. So, yeah. And I think that's also important, um, an important concept of um, CWS is they allow us to do that, to mm -hmm have 75 percent of the proceeds go to the the global organization and then a portion of it to go to a local organization because people can identify with that yeah exactly exactly oh all good points this is really good <laughs> well thank you guys again so much for being for being willing to be interviewed and um i look forward to seeing you guys again <laughs> okay Thanks, thank you Thanks, right Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much to um, Lisa and Marcia for sharing those with us and a special thanks to our, our colleague, Belinda Dye for uh, hosting that um, that interview with them. Um, again, that I really enjoyed how they shared a lot about getting the entire church involved and getting support to help continue that legacy. So um, yeah. I hope everyone got something great from that as well. So our, our last speaker today, our last guest is Jenny Henderson. Uh, Jenny first participated in the Charlotte Crop Hunger Walk um, in 2014. And in 2015, she was asked to be the team captain. Then in 2016, she joined the walk planning team to share her fundraising tips with other team captains. And in 2022, she was promoted to the co-chair of the walk. So Jenny has obviously a great passion for the crop hunger walk. And um, and from what I was told from my colleague that uh, works directly with Jenny, she is a, a great inspiration for everyone. So Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'll let you take it. Hey. <laughs> no. yeah. Hi, fingers crossed. Here you come. There we go. I hope. Yay. Okay. Yep. We see you and hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Well, well thank Jenny. you guys. Um, yes, I've been involved with the Crap Walk since 2014. I first started off as a walker. I was very excited to be a part of it. And so in 2015, when our team captain was stepping down, they asked me to join. And I was very excited because I knew that my church was very involved in, in the crop walk and, and always raised a lot of money. But when I was asked to, to take over, I was pretty much given nothing. So I started to panic almost immediately. Um, I tried to remember who was involved from the year before and I asked um, the previous captain if he had a list. So I went from the emails that he had sent out. And as soon as we had a date, I was off and running 
and emailing everybody to see who could get involved. Um, and I, I didn't really need to panic. I know I panic every year that we're not going to raise a dollar, but I panic every year. Um, but I also know that my, my team tends to give later. Um, they don't sign up six months in advance like I would. <laughs> so I've learned to let that go um, and it will happen. So once I got a list of people, I have been maintaining a, an Excel spreadsheet. And I know that uh, uh, there's a lot of transitions for a lot of team captains. So you might not be a team captain for long um, and you may not receive anything from the person before. So I keep an Excel file. So whoever takes over from me is gonna get an Excel file with the year people walked, their email addresses um, and, and how much they raised. And so I keep track of that. And I also keep track of um, shirts that they buy. Like I, I just try to keep as much data as possible because it was very helpful as the years went on for me to reach out to other walkers um, and get everybody invited. Whew. Okay, so once I get that set up, the first thing I do when I get the date is I email and talk to every single organization in church, starting with the youth. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody keeps that date open. There should be no other event for that day. And I try to get every group involved. Uh, we have a lunch that day. So we have several groups who will take care of providing lunch for our walkers and for our sponsors. We like to include everybody. Like even if you're not able to walk, if you were able to donate money, we're recognizing you and we're thanking you for that. That day, we also provide, if you have the lunch, you can carpool, which is very key when we have a lot of people who don't want to drive down to Charlotte. So that's kind of our day stuff. But leading up to that, the four weeks before the, the walk, I am out there right at, as soon as church lets out, I am standing there and I am like a used car salesman. I am grabbing everybody and I'm saying, are you signing up to walk? If you're not going to walk, will you sponsor me? I, I have no... <laughs> I have no shame on those Sundays. And I usually get a lot of people. I will take cash, I will take credit cards, I will take checks, whatever you want. And I make sure that they know that I'm around to get that. Once I get people signed up, we do have our table, like Jim had mentioned, we have our table in the gathering space. And I start to put things up on the wall with names of everybody who's walking. So people who come after church can look and say, oh, that person's walking, I can sponsor them. And I try to highlight them throughout the, the Sundays, make sure that you know somebody who might be embarrassed because they don't, they're not raising a lot of money. I try to steer people towards them so they feel a little bit more confident. Um, I don't want anybody not to walk because they don't think they can raise anything. And I really, really push on social media. Um, I, we have a, a church group um, on Facebook and I'm in there probably leading up to the walk Every month I'm posting something. As we get closer, every week I'm posting something. Here's how you can donate. Here's how you can sign up. Um, I, I would love you to walk, but I want you to sponsor somebody more than anything. And <coughs> excuse me. And that usually gets a little, a little help. I also provide ways. I have a lot of technology um, shy people, so I also show them how they can promote it through emails and Facebook um, and help them. That really helped out a lot during quarantine because people weren't seeing other people and they didn't really, you know, feel comfortable asking people for money. So I was able to show them through social media and emails how to reach reach out, which was really good. Um, I have a whole bunch of things here. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so leading up to the the walk, I'm set, I start sending emails out to everybody who is on my list. And then I have a specific email to everybody who has signed up to walk. As the weeks go on, for the people who are signed up to walk, I'm going to offer them fundraising tips about um, having having people check to see if they, their company has a matching fund. Um, we tend to get a lot of bonus money from Wells Fargo and Bank of America and a few others who will match donations from their employees that we didn't know about. I let them know about the birthday um, fundraising on Facebook. When it's your birthday, you can ask people to donate to any charity and you can pick the crop walk and we can get it, get it in that way. Um, but I also, so I send something out to everybody reminding of when the, when the walk is, 
But then as for the walkers, I'm gonna give them tips on parking. I'm gonna give them tips on what to wear as and weather updates as we get closer. And I'm gonna give them tips on, you know, look, we're at this number. If we get to this number, then I'm gonna have Pastor Ward dress as a superhero for the walk, which I have done. And my pastor has come to the walk in a cape and tights. And let me tell you something, it's my favorite thing in the world. I've also challenged my, I know I'm talking fast, I'm so sorry. I've also challenged my congregation and I've gotten up there and I said, if we don't reach this amount or if we reach this amount, I will do this. And I am famous, clearly I'm from in the Charlotte walk, but I am not a Charlotte Pitt or a Carolina Panthers fan. I do not like them. I clearly like the Eagles. And I have offered that if we rate for one year, if we met $15,000, I would buy a, a Carolina Panthers shirt and I would wear it every Sunday. Um, unfortunately, we did meet that goal and I did have to wear that shirt every Sunday. Um, I, I exclude playoffs. I won't allow that for playoffs, but that's, <laughs> that's beside the point. Um, so I offer little challenges. It's not anything big, but it's something that get people excited. Um, when I had my, my pastor wear his tights and cape, that was pretty, that was pretty fun for everybody. Um, I've also encouraged people if they cannot walk, because uh, I have a lot of regular walkers, if they cannot walk, they're welcome to walk somewhere else. So we were doing virtual walks before virtual walks were a thing, which has been great. If people are away that weekend, I don't want them to think that they can't be involved. So they'll send me pictures of their walk and I'll post it for everybody to see. And I also do start posting pictures of, of previous walks to get people excited. Um, we have also, a lot, there are a lot of people who don't feel comfortable walking long long distances. So we started a walking group. Like every every two weeks, we would go walk on the greenways in Charlotte just for a, like an hour or a half hour and get people used to the walking, which was really good. Um, ooh, excuse me. I have also, I talk, I talk a lot. I like to talk <laughs> in person. And um, so I, I will get up every, every year at the beginning of fundraising season and I will talk to the congregation. I, I've used everything from the BB talk, um, the BB um, talk and I've had, I, I usually ask the youth to help me to, with demonstrations to get them involved in it. Um, I've written up things that I have passed out to other uh, team captains, which they've been able to read um, at their churches. I've also offered to come talk to other churches and, and some of them have taken me up on that. So if you're not comfortable talking, find somebody who, who is and, and have them come talk because it, it really does help to have somebody in engaged that people can ask questions of and who can um, kind of be a cheerleader. And that's another thing. I've also asked my, my congregation to, if, they're not, if they don't feel comfortable walking, Come and be a cheerleader. It, you know, we can take. We'll take anything. We just want everybody to be there and feel like they're making a difference, and they usually are. Um. So that's. <laughs> I feel like I've been throwing a bunch of stuff out. Um. I have one more thing, and that is that there's another church that we we got involved with, especially during um, quarantine, where we would take turns having churches outside at at each other's location, and it would give a, the pastors a little bit of a break. So we invited them to join us. They weren't actually able to join us this year. However, they were doing a bike ride that day. So they just raised money for their bike ride and, and gave it to the crop walk. So that we're hopeful that they're gonna join us next year. So my, my big thing is if we can't raise the money, bring somebody and hopefully that's gonna add to it for the following year. But uh, I guess what I'm gonna end on is, I, like I said, I panic. When I was given the, the team captain, Advent is one of the smaller churches in the Charlotte Walk, but they are consistently one of the top fundraisers. And that was a lot of pressure on me. And I was like, I don't understand how I'm gonna do this. Ask, ask people to donate. And I, I, you know, I always say, if you ask, if you don't ask, no money's gonna give. Ask people for $5, ask people for $10. Just keep asking, um, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes, especially the past couple of years, when you know things have been a little tight but that's why i say ask for five dollars ask for ten dollars um if you if you don't think you can raise fifty dollars ask somebody to walk with you who can raise 25 and you can raise 25. and that way the more people get involved clearly we've all been involved for a while 
So the more people who get involved, it's going to get bigger and bigger as the time goes by. And I think that's all I really have um, for this. And I know I talked fast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much for sharing those with us, sharing with us today. Um, so many great ideas, um, nuggets in that whole thing. So one of the big things that you let off with, and I find it very, very important, keep good records. Because um, you know you're probably not going to do this, hold this position as team captain forever. So keep some good records that you can share with the the person stepping up and taking your place from there. And also a good tip would be to be a mentor. You know, if mm -hmm. it's going to be your last year to, hey, I'm going to, I'm recruiting you and I want you to work with me and, and see how this is done and I'll pass all this stuff to you. Um, it is easier so, yeah. to do it with a, with a code person. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Takes a little pressure I'll, off. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, I will invite uh, Jim to join us back here, and um, we will go through and see what questions we have. Some may be for him as well. Um, Heather, do you, I, I know I looked on the chat box while I was off. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this one is for Jenny, since um, Jim is not back on with us yet. Um, you mentioned that you use um, that you collect with credit cards after uh, church, but so somebody's asking how exactly you would do that. I keep my iPad with me, and I have the web the fundraising website up, and they can just go right in and and uh, and donate right to the website. Okay. That's a great awesome. idea. I would, not yeah. have, I would have never thought of that. So that's a great idea. Uh, <laughs> um, then this one is how many months ahead do teams begin to collect donations? Um, Jim, how far ahead do you collect? Oh, let me unmute him. There. You're you're good, Jim. Try again. Okay. As I mentioned, we usually start it in August if if the walk is at the end of October, which it always is here. So that's when that's when my wife and I really get started and get organized and and uh, make sure we have things running right on the website. And that has improved every year. It's just gotten better and better and easier for people to to use. Now, I will say there is um, a general rule for the collection of checks and, and it, that it it really, um, they don't clear a bank after six months. So don't collect checks too far ahead. Um, mm. Now, um, oh, this is just a comment. Um, from uh, one of the people that said that they've actually seen key, uh, QR codes showing up in um, people's yards for Ukraine. So they're thinking of doing that for their walk. So there's a thought that could be shared. We do have that. Yep. We and do then, have that. really so oh, do you do that? Yeah. I'm not sure how we got involved in that, but our walk does it. And it's really super. I mean, there it is. <laughs> And uh, it's real simple, and uh, yeah, it it really it has helped a lot. We used that last year. And um, I can say, reach out to uh, your CWS staff person. We can make those QR codes like that for you. So um, <laughs> yeah, just let us know, and we'll we'll get you a QR a QR code. Um, and then Jenny, this is back to you. It's. Um, <laughs> They're loving your challenges, the Panther jersey, superhero <laughs> tights. Um, any other thoughts uh, that could be used as team captain challenges? It, if you have somebody who's willing to go and, and be crazy about it, it that is very helpful. Um, we, I, I've asked if people would dress a certain way. I've asked if we could, we could do a dunk tank. Um, and because we've done a dunk tank for other events um, and you could dunk the pastor for a dollar 
Um, so <laughs> we, we've we've used other other things like that. Um, I, I've also offered um, gift cards. Like you know, if we can get if we can um, reach a certain card, we'll do a we'll do a drawing for a gift card or something that somebody donated. Um, you know, you can just go wild with it. Um, and then this one could be for either of you. You can take turns. Um, how um, how do you recruit new team members? That's hard, I think. But we've, uh, of course, we know the people who have done it for every year for a while. And we try to talk to new people in our church. But it seems to be... Uh, Kind of word of mouth too. Bring your friends. Yeah, bring your friends along. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we always end up with more people walking than are on the team, you know, which is fine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's easier for people at the last minute to, to get involved, like, like you said. And uh, I was going to repeat what uh, Jenny said about you know, the hardest thing for people is asking for money. And I really understand that. I mean, I don't like it, <laughs> but you have to. <laughs> and and the more you, uh, people understand that's what you're doing. It's a good cause. And, you know, we find ourselves every year saying the needs are greater than ever. Isn't it true? I mean, there's always something and it's just, you know, so you just have to explain it and and say, we need your help again this year, and that's that. How about you, Jenny? I, I took, one day I just will sit down and I take the entire church directory and I email every email in that directory individually. Cause if you, if you, you don't want to send it with a bunch of names, cause that could go straight to spam and nobody's ever going to open it. I address it to whoever's email address it is. And I, you know, I invite them to join us. If, to come see me if, I, if they have any questions. Um, and if they can't, you know, if they can't walk with us, if they would if they would consider sponsoring somebody. So I contact everybody that I can outside of stopping everybody like a used car salesman in the, in the <laughs> gathering space, which is what I do. <laughs> Jenny, you, you mentioned going to talk uh, to other congregations, mm -hmm. other churches. So do you see that that, is a good way to get people to maybe join your team for a first year and then maybe roll off and create their own team and their own organization. I think so. Oh. I think so. And I think I can remember my first one, everything that happened in that video, but having somebody talk is a little bit more personable and, you know, and, and it also creates a space for people to ask questions. Um, so I, I, I feel that, that that helps invites people to come talk to you and, and want to get involved um but you know like i said i have there are a lot there are some team captains in charlotte that just don't feel comfortable with public speaking and clearly i'll talk in front of anybody um so i you know i even if it's not you who can talk ask somebody at your church who who is constantly up there talking perhaps invite them to lunch go over talking points that you would like to have and have somebody else get involved and that kind of helps build a little rapport with other people. I also, I, I will mention that when I will sit down with my, my pastor um, and say, which week is the best week for me to talk? Like what's, where, what are your sermons for this month? Like, how can we tie that in? And we usually try to work that out. I forgot that. Excellent. Well, that was all the questions, Lenny. Um, so unless you have others that you are bringing to the table. Um, and this webinar has gone a lot like life. It went really well, we had a little <laughs> hiccup, it's gone really well again. Um, but if you have some more questions um, or you can finish the webinar. I think we're good. I really wanna thank you both, Jim and Jenny for joining us today and sharing as well as Lisa and Marcia um, doing the recording for us. So um, everyone, this will be or was recorded. So as your community engagement specialist will send these recordings out to you and feel free to look through those, contact them with any questions. And 
good luck being a strong team captain. <laughs> and um, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.